Greetings and salutations. This is Imperator Vespasian and he's just a sidekick. Hello. In Xanadu did Kubla Khan a stately pleasure dome decree, where Alf the sacred river ran in caverns and measureless to man. What are you looking like that for? Today we're doing Mongols. This is the box from Five Forge Games of Mongol Cavalry. It's going to be to fight against um, every arm we own. Really? Yeah. The Mongols pretty much fought everyone and I'm conquered going. everyone. No. Yeah, kind of conquered the whole of China. Um, Did it conquer Rome? Uh, the Byzantine Empire. No, um, actually it came close. Oh, it wasn't the Byzantine Empire at that point anyway, but... No, it was um, about half of it. Yeah, but, um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, they did actually invade Europe successfully. Unfortunately, they defeated the, the, the Crusader army, but they went home instead of conquering Europe. And had they carried on pushing, they would probably have taken Europe, given that we had nothing to stop them at this point. <laughs> Um, so here are the Mongols. Uh, I'll pop the box open and we'll have a look. Right. So these are the box, these are the sprues. We have body and feet, and again, body and feet. Let's have a look. I'm trying to work out. That's they're identical. They're identical. Ah, that's the one. So, we have a set of horses. Uh, they're quite good horses. They've got a lot of kit on them. The Mongols tended to carry everything with them. So they have bits of rope and all sorts of stuff stashed on the horses, bed bags and everything. So unlike most armies who, that had a baggage train, the Mongols typically didn't use a baggage train. You carried everything with you on the hoof. Um, and you also carried your house. Girts, big round tents on the, the Indians did that, didn't they? With their jeweller. Carry everything you own. Yeah, yeah. that's for different reasons though. Uh, the, the, the Indians started doing that so they could run away carrying everything they own. Whereas the Mongols actually just didn't own that much. They only owned enough to actually put on the back of a horse and then they rode off. Um, so figure-wise, let's go with the figures. Um, the horses are brilliant, but the figures are interesting because they're separate legs to bodies, which means you can actually put them in multiple poses. So I think that's going to look really good when it's done. I haven't put any together yet, so this is all still to come. Um, Weapon-wise, um, all Mongols, all Mongols carried bow. All Mongol on horseback carried bow. And they could use the bow or they could use a different weapon. Um, but typically they could all fire bow. And they used a composite bow that could be fired from horseback. So they could fire with the same rate as bowmen on foot. Usually men on horseback are not good at shooting. Mongols actually were. Uh, it was basically one of their main tactics. Typically they would ride around an enemy and pelt them with arrows. That's how they used to win most of their battles. Yeah. Um, they also use very good military tactics, Romanesque in nature, and they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Um, we have that there, which is a uh, banner, and you can either have the tails on it, or you can have the have that. Um, there were seven Mongol tribes, and that's what the that's what these represent. They're, they're the different tribes of the Mongols. Uh, chap by the name, chap by the name of uh, Genghis, um, rose to dominance. Uh, he was a the son of a one of the Mongol cl tra cl clans, and there's a really long story behind it, which I'm not going to go into now. But basically, his father was murdered, and he nobbled all all the other clan leaders and united the Mongols under one banner. And it was quite complex, but he did it. And he then was attacked by China. The Chinese murdered some some Mongolians, and so he annexed uh, Shishia, which was one of the Chinese 
colonies, and, and then he conquered Sun, and then he conquered uh, Xin, which was the, the biggest part of China. There were three separate Chinese states, and he, he conquered all of them. And then he conquered pretty much everything else. Um, he did really well. And he didn't take... He was a pretty decent guy because he didn't take... No, he, he, he wouldn't allow someone to offend the Mongols and not, not respond. Um, I would say most of his wars were actually defensive in nature, like the Romans. They didn't, the Romans didn't tend to go and attack people unless they were attacked first, because it was a good excuse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you've got lots of selection of stuff in the, in the box, and it's really up to you how you put them together. They're Mongols, so there's no actual set uniform or anything. They tended to wear quite bright colours, they tended to wear a lot of silks and stuff, uh, a lot of brightly coloured silk, uh, and they all, all wore silk, a silk shirt uh, because it's easier to pull an arrow out if you're stabbed wearing a silk shirt because the silk wraps around the barb and it, and it makes it easier to take the arrow out. So that's one of the reasons they wore it. Cool. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. And they also relied on speed rather than armour. Well, yeah. That's so the Japanese. Hmm? So did the Japanese. Yeah. Our Japanese arm wasn't too bad considering what you're up against. But, yeah, they tended to go lightweight. Um, although, full-on full samurai armor weighs a huge amount. But, generally... They, they, train, they train with things that are heavier. Yes, they, they wore twice the weight to train, therefore they could carry the armor. This is, uh, knights did as well. So it, well, yeah, it makes sense though, doesn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. just, it's just oh, what you do. Um, all, our, all armies must do that these days. Anyway. Not, not, not these days, but... No, armies do still train. And uh, you have to train carrying more weight than you normally carry. And that makes it easier for you to actually move around. Um, so, yeah, th this is the Mongol box. Um, any questions? Did most of the Mongol army... Were, were most of the Mongol army on horseback? At the beginning, yes, nearly the entire Mongol army was horseback. In fact, the entire Mongol army was horseback. Um, but as time went on, a lot of Koreans joined the Mongol army, uh, a lot of Russians joined the Mongol army, a lot of other people joined, and the Mongols themselves began to sort of build houses to live in as opposed to need horses to ride around a lot. And, and the, the, so there were steppe warriors who, who did fight uh, on foot, so they, they, you would find Mongol troops fighting on foot as well as mounted. Uh, certainly, period we're doing, there would be probably just as many foot troops as mounted, uh, simply because of the type of terrain they're fighting in. Um, when they're fighting in Russia, there, there was a lot of woods and stuff. It is only like three roads in the whole of Russia, and it, it wasn't easy to get your horses around. So you would have to, you wouldn't ride your horse uh, because you, you'd sink into the mud. So, um, Mongols got used to fighting on horseback in Europe, but they still, at least half the army would be mounted. So you'd still have huge amounts of mounted cavalry. Right. Next question? Did, did most of the Mongol army, were most of the Mong Mongol army trained in uh, mat matmanship? Yes. They were drilled heavily. Uh, they were drilled by regiment. They were very, very well trained. Um, they, they would, um, right at the beginning, the, the Mongols would, would typically just, uh, this is pre Genghis, uh, Temujin, um, that they would uh, just basically ride up to the enemy, firing arrows, and then do a bit of close combat with a sword. Um, what Genghis did, he trained his army, he drilled his army into units, individual units that operated separately. And there was a really, really big battle against three of the clans that were united. And he sent his first cavalry in, and then his cavalry were ordered to break and run away. And the three armies opposing him saw the cavalry running away, and all charged at the same time. And then he enveloped them, surrounded them with, with, the, with the other troops, and, and, and annihilated them. Um, he didn't have any time for most of these leaders, because they betrayed him. If you, start, if you were nice to Genghis, he was nice to you. And he would give you anything you wanted and he would be really nice to you. If you stabbed him in the back, he never gave 
mercy for that. If you betrayed him, you died. And so did the rest of your family. Um, so he was pretty harsh as a leader, but certainly as far as discipline is concerned, you, you would do exactly as you were told by your commander, because this stuff rolls downhill. And he had some really good commanders as well, uh, especially when he invaded China. Um, uh, against the Xin, um, they were the most organised Chinese. The Shishia was, was basic, basically a naval power and they didn't really have much of a land army. Uh, they basically had city walls and that was it. They didn't really have an army. Um, Genghis actually learned to ride, um, invented boats, basically. He, he, the Mongols never used boats and, and Genghis built the fleet to fight. Um, and against the Xin, the Xin of course had huge city walls, huge a huge army, and they used lots of uh, anti-cavalry uh, anti-cavalry tactics. They used cow traps to to hurt horses' hooves. Um, so the Mongols had to dismount to fight. They couldn't. They didn't use their cavalry in combat, so they actually had to fight on foot. Um, same with the Russians, and same fight in the Crusaders as well. They they also use use the same tactic against the Mongols. So as as I said about the foot thing, sometimes you have to fight on foot. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there's a huge amount of history with the Mongol Empire, and I'm not going to give you a history lesson that right now. I'll just tell you the bits that are important. Um, I can't really say much about the figures because they're pretty um, standard. We've done so many of these boxes now that we've become used to the, the sort of figures you get. You get lots of types of quivers, I think there's three types of quivers. Um, so you can personalise each man. I quite like the shields. And we're, and we're here repeat, repeating us all. Yeah, because because all these boxes we've been doing recently are all from Fireforge, they all have the same basic layout. Um, so the, the only difference with these is the top of the body is separate from the, the lower part, so they're a bit more like the Muslim cavalry. Because the Muslim cavalry have, have, have interchangeable bodies, so I should guess they'd be like those to put together. I haven't done any of these yet. I was originally going to use some of these as Russian light cavalry, um, but the the uniform that they're wearing would, would be really steppe cavalry, as opposed to northern cavalry. Um, so I'm, I'm still toying with that idea, uh, but I'm going to see how it plays out. So, any more questions? No, that's it. Hmm. Um, we had a guy who asked a question about whether or not it was worth it um, getting these figures. Uh, given that Fireforge, you do get less figures for your money, generally. Um, I think they're worth it. It depends how big your units are. I mean, if you're playing Hail Caesar the way we play Hail Caesar with the large, with the bases with four figures on, that's, we base four figures to a base six bases making a unit in Hail Caesar, uh, then one box would do you one unit. Whereas if you do it the way we're doing with our Warhammer, um, you'd get two to three boxes out of a unit. You get three box three units out of a box. So I mentioned that yet, Warhammer. Hmm? I have I have on um, messages. I've oh. managed to, I've, I have man managed to I've actually managed to get into uh, and reply to people uh, in a, in a few minutes. That's yes it's, it's yeah. not often I can actually get my, for some reason, my computer will not let me answer messages on on YouTube. I get the messages, I can read all the messages, I can't, I can't reply. I type replies and it just won't go, it won't send. And all the no, no, well, you know when you get that little bell icon, yeah. no pops up, it clicks it, and nothing comes And there's up. nothing there, it won't show me the message. Yeah, I don't know what is wrong. It, and it's not just my computer, uh, um, because the laptop do, does it as well. It's probably, just, it's probably just the YouTube internet. I don't know. It might might be a connection. I don't know. But there, there is a, we have a problem answering messages. So I always try to answer messages as soon as I get them. So I do often read your messages and I try to answer you and I'm there banging the key keyboard saying send. So please don't think I'm ignoring you if I don't message you back straight away. I can only message you back when it wants to let me send messages. <laughs> Yeah, if YouTube doesn't feel like it, it won't send them. Yeah, it's, it's up to YouTube. Sometimes YouTube just can't be bothered to let me send messages. It's a bit tired. Um, yeah. So, uh, as figures go, I like them. I especially like the horses. 
So that's my view yeah, on horses. Mongol cavalry. Yeah. Although I'm not sure how easy it's going to be getting these horses to rear up on the hind legs. Because all the horses seem to be galloping. That's what I like about the Crusaders. You can actually have them rear, rearing up on the hind legs because of the, the way the, the grass touches the feet enables you to do it at an angle. To base them at an angle. Um, whereas these don't appear to have that. But we will find out. Indeed. Indeed. Yes. indeed. You're using indeed a lot. Yes. Yes, you are. Right. Um, yeah, perfect figures. Love them. Go buy them immediately. Um, obviously, not many people are going to be doing Mongols. I don't know why, because they were kind of the biggest land empire, and they were pretty impressive. I think it's because we live in Europe, and a lot of people in Europe don't really play sort of Mongols, whereas you get a lot more people in America and stuff playing Mongols. I don't know why that is. Probably yeah. because they have better TV than we do. But if you look them up, um, it, the BBC did a brilliant series called Storm from the East, which, when I was young, was one of the most awesome TV series. series. And that, that pretty much is, has got everything in it, that series. Um, it might even be on YouTube if you look, look for it. Um, but that is a really good series all about the Mongols, and they were impressive. They definitely were impressive. So, you will see them in battle soon, once I get these guys painted up and based, and I will definitely do a video on them when they're finished. So, that's everything? Yeah. yeah that's everything from me and everything from him and he does the outro. So, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can down below with your opinion, your questions on the Mongol, of the Mongol cavalry. That's everything from me. And everything from him. Goodbye. Bye-bye.